welcome back to Music Talk. I'm Dave. I'm Mike. <laughs> yeah. Dave, Dave. That's Dave right there. <laughs> and this week, we're going to do the review for Jack White's Fear of the Dawn. And the cover looks like this. Got that cool Cadillac looking car there. Mm -hmm. Back album cover's got this on it. A tiger hiding in the uh, woods there. Mm -hmm. Inside cover looks like this. Same thing as the CD. And it's got this cool stuff going on on the inside, these little drawings, you know, those tie there. He's got this cool picture of this chick on this rock, lightning coming from the sun there. So you got the lyrics. Evanescence. <laughs> yeah, right. Then you got more lyrics, more pictures all the way through. That's Jack, I'm guessing, right there. Yeah. And then you get to the end, and it gives you all the track listings and everything, everybody who played on what. So pretty interesting. So this album is very interesting to me. Um, I was a little bit surprised at it because I wasn't expecting some of the stuff on here. But it was very, it was a good record to me. I, I actually liked it because it was very different really so. i liked it yeah i liked it because he's 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 always i mean since he started has stepped out of the box right yeah and he's always seems like okay i and i know this isn't really the case with him but it's it kind of reminds me of the first time people are really understanding what they're doing with an instrument and decide to write some music mm -hmm. you know and it, it's just very interesting to me and i believe he played all the instrumentation on here at least from some of what i i heard but i gotta tell you right now there was a couple of places drum wise that and this is weird because this was just released like back last august i believe was when he recorded mm -hmm. and um i saw an interview with steve jordan you know, with Sabian cymbals. So he's sitting there and he's just got a bass drum, snare, and he's got a ride and a hi hat. And he's just here and there playing a groove, groove here and there. And on um, <clears throat> this one song, and we'll get to it, and I'll point it out once we get to it. Steve Jordan's doing the exact same drum beat. Drum beat. Jack yeah. White used. Mm -hmm. Sounded exactly the same tonal. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, you know, I wonder how much of this he actually played, you know, how Jack White actually played, or yeah. if he hired people under the pseudonym of just not putting their... Well, he has some drum, drummers on here. Uh, the first six songs, well, the first one, two, three, four, the first four songs, he does everything. Okay. okay. And then when you get to five on through then we start getting drummers and uh bass players and that could very well have been steve jordan on that track then. uh i don't i don't have steve jordan on anything um for drums i have a guy named daru jones hmm. never heard of him i haven't either um he plays most of the drums on this that you actually hear a real drummer that's it's, it's him um and then on bass, we got Dominic Davis. And then a guy named Quincy McCrary doing some uh, electric piano. That must be the band that he had that he was using on um, Cabert and things like that. He I think it is because, I mean, these guys are playing on pretty much every song. Yeah. You know, there's a couple of different people coming in. You got Scarlet White playing um, bass on one of the songs. And then you have Mark Watrous with Trouse that does some synthesizer on it but generally most of it is jack white playing you know the majority of it and you know listening to him talk about this record he said that he sat down and he started writing these songs and he came up he didn't know he was going to write an album but he started coming up with all these songs and he had enough to do a record but then he noticed that some of the songs weren't quite melding with the other ones 
so he continued to go on because he likes to do sort of like a, a theme where the whole album has like a theme right, right. so he ended up writing more and he wrote enough for two records uh -huh. so he he didn't want to put some of them on this record because they were more of a uh i guess mellower i'm i'm guessing uh -huh. so what he did was he wrote enough for two albums and he was going to put them both out at the same time and he said you know it's not really a good idea to put two records out at once so he said plus he owns a a, a studio printing press called uh third man studio right uh -huh. <clears throat> so it's like a you can actually go look through the window like you're shopping for records and you can watch them pressing vinyl in there and right. then you can actually buy the vinyl there so he's like i, I didn't want to do them at the same time because i couldn't press them and even if i had another pressing company help me i wouldn't be able to get them all out at the same time right. plus you know it wouldn't be very advantageous to do that so what he did was he just he went ahead and did fear of the dawn first because he wanted to come out with something rocking and then sometime in july he's going to have another one out called entering heaven alive so we, we're going to have another jack white album come out here real shortly mm -hmm. so and that's going to have the songs that he didn't think were a good fit for this record but anyway we'll go through the tracks real quick and uh so we got taking me back which i thought was a great opener i mean i love the drums on it i i thought it was a. Uh, a really good hit you in the face beginning to this record yeah <clears throat> it had a lot of sounds and noises coming through because i mean he's putting a lot of stuff in the background weaving in and out and stuff oh, yeah. but I, I, I really did think it was a good record and i thought his voice sounded good on it too mm -hmm. so, then yeah. we get to we get to number two which is fear of the dawn and it's kind of similar you're getting a lot of similar sounds you know but it's got a more driving rhythm and you know you're getting this overdrive bass and stuff and i mean still rocking it out right you know then you get to the third one the white raven and you really get that overdrive bass sound mm -hmm. and then the drum sound changed a little bit on this one it's kind of it wasn't like you know you, you're getting a, one thing about this record is the drums don't remain the same on every song i'll tell you i i was happy with the drum sounds and there are a couple of songs that 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 really knocked me over. I mean, with the the natural resonance of the drums, it was nothing really put on them. It was just a natural sound. No, and you could tell it was a real drum kit. Yeah. You know, and I think if I'm not mistaken, that Jack White's into the analog recording process. It's not yeah. that he's against digital, but he prefers to record analog, I think. I mean, he, you know, he uses digital effects and stuff, but I think he's more into the just play it, record it. The way well, I, know, I know i know pretty much experimental uh artists are into the analog because hands-on you change things and that's the sound you want to record you don't want to sit there and guess okay yeah. i'm gonna insert this digitally and see what happens yeah and digital distortion and feedback sucks yeah yeah you know and that's Again, the another strike for analog <laughs> yeah and then the thing too is you know especially on drums, man, when you get that natural drum sound, like he got on this record, it's just so nice to hear that. Now, all the oh, yeah. effects you put on guitars and bass, you know, do whatever you want to get that sound. But when you bring that natural drum sound, I just love that. So yeah. then on White Raven, you know, like I said, we had the overdriving bass sound again with the change of the drum sound a little bit, but it had some nice dramatic, dramatic changes in it. And what I was going to ask you about was um, he's getting this like reverse cymbal sound. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so i mean is that an effect of some sort i mean what kind of effect would you do to get that reverse cymbal sound record a cymbal and then play the tape backwards just play it backwards is there an a is there any kind of gate or something you can do that re would probably use that? an envelope filter or something like that but i mean it has to be so precise and then it starts sounding mechanical after a while yeah it sounded really cool but he was doing it on a few songs uh, and I thought it was really neat. He does it again later on, but uh, Beatles, the white Ravens where I first, I think I'd recognized it the most. So Beatles and Hendrix did a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it wasn't really like weird, you know, cause sometimes you get weird stuff, but it, it was like, it fit really well with what he was looking for. I think, you know, so then we get to number four, which is a very interesting song here. So you got Q-tip doing some rapping on this. Yeah. It's called Heidi Ho, right? 
and yeah. you got the cab Callaway right. stuff going on here. Yeah, the, he he did some samples off Cab Calloway. And, yeah, and it's like a, a an opera singing Cab Calloway with these cool bass riffs, and it goes into this cool rap, and then you go into this breakdown, and it turns into a Spanish beat, and it's like, yeah, man, it's like all over the map. <laughs> it is, man. It's like you go from one to the other, and then it's it, but it's very. This song right here sticks in your head, dude. It's like one of them earworms that when you finish listening to the CD, you keep hearing that. I do, I do, I do. I do. <laughs> it's just going around and around. My wife really liked this album. I liked it too. Well, yeah, I, mean, I think it's really I cool. I didn't get tired. I didn't get fatigued listening to it. No, I thought it was awesome. Um, yeah. Then we get to, uh, I'm going to probably say this wrong, but it's a phobia. So esophobia means a morbid fear of dawn or daylight. So it makes yeah. sense to have a song on here called that. But it started out kind of reminding me of Sublime almost. Yeah. You know, yeah. Had that Greek, yeah. Yeah. Greek for title, fear of the dawn. Yep. Yeah. And this had that really cool guitar riff in it with the delay in there. Man, it was so cool. And uh, I, I thought this was one of, this is one of my favorite songs. It's really psychedelic and it does some crazy stuff in there. But, you know, it's kind of what you're looking for with this record because it's it's kind of flowing together to me I, I feel like it was all a concept almost really mm -hmm. um so that was number five now we get to number six and this is where we start bringing in other people right and i love this into the twilight i love the groove on this yeah and this one again has some of that reverse symbol stuff but you know i know i'm gonna i know i'm gonna get anybody that's gonna hear this is gonna probably give me some flack for saying this but and I feel like this about the whole record. It almost feels like it's a, a, a less complicated Frank Zappa thing going on here, right? Well, he's, I he's think got I, a lot of Zappa stuff going on, but kind of, but I think, the, I think, I think people on the, especially where he's at, Jack White, the only way I can uh, describe his songs is you know, from where he's coming from writing wise is that he just had already has this whole picture of what's going to happen. Yeah. And then he just pursues putting it together, mm -hmm. which my God, I wish things came that easy to me. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, and he puts these things together and it's just like, okay, he's using loops in Manhattan transfer, mm -hmm. you know, they're doing those augmented and diminished uh, scat vocals and, yeah it's kind of yeah i mean it's it's <laughs> i don't know you know I, it, it, there's old school new school experimental and it's all in one package and it's like yeah wow wow <laughs> you know yeah, i mean it's wow. definitely a great mesh of, of all this stuff going on and that's kind of why i feel like it's, it reminds me of what zappa would do but yeah. of course zappa used to do these really complicated crazy things in the middle that were just way out there right 24 7 and <laughs> yeah so to me i i feel that in here a little bit i i feel a lot of that but and it's probably just me so yeah, anyway I, no I'm, i i get where you're coming from i mean it, it's definitely a few notches above my thinking <laughs> yeah and the, and the thing is it's not so far out there that you <laughs> comprehend what's going on you know because right, right. sometimes zappa stuff I can't comprehend what's going on, <laughs> but you know, still great stuff, just way over my head. But then we get to number seven, which is really just a 30 second interlude and it's called dusk. Yeah. And then we go to number eight, which is what's the trick. <laughs> and to me, this sounded like a Primus song without crazy bass lines. It was super cool riff, but it reminded me so a lot of, of Primus, the way he did the talking. It almost sounded like he was on a megaphone sometime. You know what I mean? Like and this guys is, go around and around, you know. Yeah, this is the song too that I, I thought uh, that Steve Jordan had possibly played drums on. This was the, the basic beat that he was doing in his interview. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe he had listened to this album or something. I don't know. You know, but at the same time, you know, it, it's also if you think about it, it's Bonham used this in in in, the, in Zeppelin. Well. Era. Jack White actually played the drums on this one. Did he? Yeah, this is one where he did everything on it. 
That's what I thought. Except for the Harley Davidson motorcycle. He had somebody else do that. <laughs> I'm walking around with a hand recorder. Crank it up. <laughs> but it had this bell part in there too. That reminded me a little bit of the Beastie Boys too. It had that little bell part in the middle, you know? Right. Right. So that was pretty cool. A lot going on in this one. Really cool riff, though. Man, I, I really dug that one. A lot of his riffs that he comes up with are like rocking riff, but you got a good groove, and you can feel it, man. You know, you can roll with it, and th and that's one thing I liked about this record was all the grooving going on. You know, yeah. and well, the more I listened to this record, the more I liked it too. Yeah. I mean, well, the thing is, is when you listen to this stuff, you go, "Wow, where did he come up with that?" And then you listen to it again and go. I missed that. Well, it's, it's really simple, though. Right. But then what you're thinking, when you're thinking that it's simple, here's where it gets complicated. Because yep. You come up with these sounds, you know, it's like, yep. okay, what do you do? Take a take a pair of scissors and cut his speakers up? Or, <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean. It's it's very interesting the whole record for sure, and it's short too. It's only like thirty eight minutes the whole record. Yeah, it's yeah. not long at all, so you can get through it very fast. And it's like, man, it was it was almost you know leaving you wanting more. So you're wanting that next record, you know, which is what I really like. I want you to give me something where I want you to come back quickly and give me wow. something. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we get to number nine, which is that was then. This is now. Great drums, you know, it was a little bit popish in parts, like you know typical rock pop thing had quite a few changes in this one i mean you were going when you get in one groove you went to another groove you went to another it, it was mm -hmm. very interesting still a good song though mm -hmm. uh, then we go back to the reprise for iso isophobia or isophobia eosophobia whatever and this one's basically that guitar riff with the delay kind of built off of that again mm -hmm. um still good and then you get to number 11 you got morning noon and night which has got that rock vamp and it has this crazy keyboard harmonies in there man when he does <laughs> that keyboard part that's like wow it's kind of wild you know right right and then you got this little march going on and the solo was fantastic in this one the guitar solo i thought it was phenomenal on this one oh. so i was digging that for sure right. and then number 12 the last song is shedding my velvet you know and uh it's got this real bluesy beginning, you know, and his voice on this one was a little different than the rest of the record. And, and I think it showcased how good his, his voice really is, you know? Yeah. And then at the end, he gets to this acoustic part and it kind of reminded me of Summer Breeze from Seals and Croft a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? But man, it was a great song. You know, I really love the bluesy guitar part at the beginning, nice and acoustic going on and, you know, and then you hit that bluesy stuff and i thought it was great overall i thought the album was fantastic mm -hmm. you know I, I was very happy with it i wasn't bored with it um mm -hmm. and when i listen to jack white i'm listening to him for entertainment you know most, and i gotta i gotta say that most of the music i listen to i'm listening to it's not only for the entertainment but it's for challenging me to learn new stuff on drums and, and things like that and mm -hmm. and uh <clears throat> but listen to jack white i don't feel challenged by anything he does so i sit back and relax and just take it take it for what it is you know yeah see where he's going to take it to right you know because exactly. yeah. you're going on a trip with him yeah let him tell me a story you know? yeah yeah and the words were all pretty good i didn't really dig into the vocal word i mean the word part too much in this video but there is some pretty heavy lyrical content in there you can get into probably a lot about you know fear of stuff and things like that you know and shedding my velvet basically you know you can take that for what it is yep. but to me i mean i got a couple knocks about the record one is a lot of it has similar sounds throughout i felt you know especially that overdrive bass i thought it was a little bit overused but just my opinion as a bass player not knocking it because that's what he did i'm just saying i kept hearing that sound a little bit more than i wanted to and then sometimes it was a little busy you had so much going on at some points where it was hard to just sit and concentrate on one or two things because you had these other things swirling in and out and that's okay too but for me it got a little busy so those are really the only two knocks i have on the record 
my personal opinions again don't crucify me uh, I, I i saw him perform on late night and <clears throat> i gotta tell you the band he's got is fantastic the drummer has one of the weirdest setups i've ever seen in my life yeah i mean it is weird you know it's i like, didn't see any any of his live stuff he's got a got a bass drum and then he's got this pan bass drum mounted over top of the bass drum. And then off to the left, he's got a tom-tom that's facing out. It, it's just, you got to see it. it, it it's, yeah. it's weird the way he plays. And I think it's set up that way to where he's forced to play these weird things. Right. Could be. It's like putting a capo on a guitar, you know. Right you've 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 limited what your fretboard is going to allow you to do number one and i think it, that's the reasoning behind setting up that way but i gotta tell you it was it was a killer uh, you know a killer video that he of, of watching it on late night it was i think it was on stephen cobert yeah i'll but have it, to see if i can find it yeah it, it was pretty interesting and, well, the good things for me on this one, uh, it's a very high energy record for sure. Yep. Um, I thought it had a great production, great sounds. The mix was good. The drum sounds changed quite a bit. I really like that. You didn't have the same stagnant drum sound. You ha it had great guitar work and I thought his voice was great. You know, I mean, he really is a great guitar player. People should really take him more seriously on his guitar playing because he really is a great guitar player. Well, there are people that are taking him serious. Jimmy Page took him seriously. Exactly. Yeah. So, but you don't ever hear him in a conversation when it's like great guitar players. You never hear Jack White's name, no. you know, and I think he's very innovative. And I think that's a really good thing because he's doing stuff out there. No one else is doing. And that's one thing I liked about this because it ain't something I hear all the time. Well, he's out of the pocket. So you're not going to hear people discussing. And it really don't sound like the white stripes either. So which no. I was pleasantly happy about because right. I don't want to hear something else like he's no. already done. To me, this was all Jack White. Perfect. I, I liked everything about it. So, I mean, I'm giving this one a, a an eight, six, man. I, I mean, it's went up every day. I started out in the sevens, but then I listened again and it was like lower eights. but now, now I'm up to eight, six on this one. Well, because I, I was going to say, I'm going to give it an eight, five because I liked the innovations. Yeah. The originality. I like the thinking out of the box. Yeah. The experimentation that he's doing. I mean, it's just all to me good, proper points. And absolutely. You know, it beats sitting back and going to a club and listening to some blues band play the same shuffles every night, you know. Yeah. And honestly, there's not a song on here I didn't like. Right. You know, there everything with the exception of that 30 second interlude, which basically and this album. You know, I know you you probably streamed it, but this album just goes directly right on into each song. You don't really have a pause, so yeah, like, yeah it didn't. Yeah, it didn't pause on mine either. Right, so it just kind of went through. So even that thirty second interlude was was just a, a bridge between two. It wasn't even like mm -hmm. a song, so to speak. So, I mean, every song on here was good. It was a quick record. You didn't get bored with it. Um, I think it had just the right amount of songs on there for what he needed, and. I mean, they were, it was, it was a good record, man. A really good record. So I agree. I agree. You know, I definitely suggest somebody out there getting this one. So anyway, so Jack yeah. White, Fear of the Dawn. Looks like that. You got to check it out. Yep. You won't be disappointed. No, <laughs> and, he, and he's doing the production. He's doing the pressing. He's doing all this, man. He's, he's putting the vinyl out himself out of his third man, uh, third man studio thing there. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. And third main records is what it's called. Well, I just, I just like the fact that artists are actually, actually taking it upon themselves to really create the asset of you can do it and you don't need the record companies. Behind you. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I think he's probably doing stuff with other artists that we don't really even know about and behind the scenes and pressing stuff for people and probably producing too. 
I mean, I, I didn't go really diving into his whole thing that he's doing because he's a busy man. I mean, and yet he's still putting out two records and within a couple months, you know, so and yeah. pressing and selling and doing everything else, you know, so the well, guy's a busy man, you know. Well, you and know, he's recycling too, by the way. He's using recycled plastics for the vinyl. So, good. good. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, he's trying to do everything right. So, no reason why you shouldn't. Yeah. The, uh, I don't know. I'm, it, to me, it's just really fresh. I mean, I've been following Jack White kind of ever since he had the white stripes going. Yeah. And I found it interesting when he and Meg did that. And then you had the black keys come along. Mm -hmm. and it's like okay when the black keys hit the white stripes ceased yeah <laughs> it's like okay time to move on you know yeah. and now he did I'm not stuff sure with what, uh, the racketeers and stuff like that too so uh, i'm not sure what the whole story was behind that i know that he and meg are not married anymore yeah you know, but it doesn't matter i mean he moved on and recreated another avenue After, yeah I mean, well, I'm not, I never really dove into him much, honestly. I mean, I, I've liked everything I've heard from him and I appreciate what he does, but this here to me, I thought it was just a great record. I is. really didn't go digging. I should have dug a little more into his past and maybe we'll do the next one. I'll go into a little bit of his stuff too. And that should be coming out soon. We'll go ahead and do that one too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, my exposure has only been through the hype of the media. Yeah. But I've liked everything I've heard. You yeah. Know? I yeah. mean, I, I can't think of anything that I would sit there and go, what the hell? I mean, the only what the hell would come out of my mouth would be, wow, it was only him and Meg, you know, in the beginning. You know? I mean, and think yeah. about it, too. He has he has replaced We Will Rock You as a as a sports anthem with Seven Nation Army. I mean, come on, you know. You used to hear we will so. rock you constantly, and now you hear Seven Nation Army constantly. So I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I hope that is. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap this one up. I gave it an eight six. Mike gave it an eight five. Jack White, Fear of the Dawn. Check it out. You will not be disappointed. I say it's a less complicated Frank Frank Zappa, but it's not really less complicated. It's just different. So. Thumbs up. Yeah, man, it's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, y'all stay safe out there. That's right. Peace out and listen to the music.